Hello, hockey fans, and welcome back to another episode of Whatever Happened To, the series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League but are no longer permanent fixtures in the league, either due to controversy, poor play, or just rotten luck. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at an 11 year veteran of the league. As we ask, Whatever happened to Patrick Berglund? The 25th overall selection in the 2006 NHL entry draft by the St. Louis Blues, Patrick Berglund spent the next two seasons following his draft selection in his native Sweden, as he suited up for VIK Vasteras of the Swedish Allsvenskan. Berglund had quite the two seasons in Sweden, as he scored 93 points in 71 regular season games, as well as 12 points in 15 playoff games, before heading over to North America in 2008. After two extra years overseas, Berglund wanted to show that he had used his time wisely to round out his overall game, and was ready to earn his spot on a National Hockey League roster. The 08-09 NHL season saw Berglund join the St. Louis Blues for their pre-season training camp, and make such a strong first impression that he earned a spot on the team's opening night roster. The 20-year-old forward took his newfound opportunity and ran with it, as he remained on the Blues roster for the entire season, scoring an impressive 21 goals and 26 assists for 47 points in 76 games. This play helped Berglund earn a spot on the 2009 NHL All-Rookie Team, and assisted St. Louis in clinching a place in the postseason, where Berglund went scoreless in four games, as the Blues were swept in the first round by the Vancouver Canucks. Three years after he was drafted, Berglund had arrived in the National Hockey League, living up to the high expectations a former first round pick carries. All he had to do now was keep this momentum going, which Berglund would soon find out is easier said than done. The 09-10 season saw Berglund suit up for his second year with the Blues, but unfortunately his production took a real step backwards compared to his rookie season, as the Swedish forward potted 13 goals and 13 assists for 26 points in 71 games. This sophomore slump seemed to go hand in hand with the Blues' inability to book their ticket to the playoffs, as St. Louis missed out on the postseason for the fourth time in five seasons. He may not have had the season that he wanted on the score sheet after such a strong debut year, but Berglund was sure to make up for this slump and get his progression in the league back on track in the following year. The 10-11 season saw Berglund bounce back from his prior year in a big way, as the former first round pick scored 22 goals and 30 assists for 52 points in 81 games, reaching the 20 goal plateau for the second time in three seasons, and setting career highs in assists and points that would last the rest of his career. Despite this resurgence in his numbers, the Blues were unable to make a return to postseason hockey, as they missed out on the playoffs for the second consecutive season and fifth time in six years. After his three-year entry-level contract had expired, and having shown himself to be a capable scorer in the league, the Blues wasted no time extending Berglund's stay with the team. So, on May 31st, 2011, they signed Berglund to a two-year, $4.5 million contract extension worth an average annual value of $2.25 million a season. With his first multi-million dollar deal, Berglund now had a greater responsibility to step up and be a key player for the Blues. However, he wouldn't quite live up to the numbers that got him this new deal over the contract's tenure. The 11-12 season saw the freshly contracted Berglund take a step back on the score sheet from his season prior, as the Swedish forward scored 19 goals and 19 assists 
for 38 points in 82 games. Despite this dip in his numbers, St. Louis were able to clinch a postseason berth for the first time since 2009, where Berglund notched a far more impressive 7 points in 9 playoff games, but the Blues were eliminated in the second round by the Los Angeles Kings. Though his regular season hadn't gone to plan, Berglund had finished his year on a high note with some strong postseason numbers, and was ready to become a key producer for the Blues once again. But first, there was a lockout! During the 12-13 lockout, Berglund decided to head home and rejoin his former pro team, as he suited up for VIK of the Swedish Osvenskan once again. The Swedish forward had a great showing for his post-draft side, as he potted 20 goals and 12 assists for 32 points in 30 games, before the lockout ended and Berglund returned to the Blues roster. Fortunately, his success back home in his native league helped Berglund see a slight rebound on the score sheet, as he scored 17 goals and 8 assists for 25 points in 48 games. This production helped St. Louis return to the playoffs for the second straight season, where Berglund scored 2 points in 6 games, but the Blues were eliminated in the first round by the Los Angeles Kings, again. After his two-year contract extension had expired, and having remained an important player on the roster, despite a modest step back in his production, the Blues wanted to keep Berglund around. The team had faith that their Swedish forward could bounce back and put up similar numbers of years gone by, but would give him the opportunity to do so on a more team-friendly deal. So, on June 25th, 2013, they signed him to a one-year contract worth $3.25 million. With such a short term and only a mild pay rise, Berglund had just been handed a prove-it deal, and had to pick up the slack if he wanted to sign a more long-term contract and stick around with the team that drafted him for the foreseeable future. Did that happen? Well, the 13-14 season saw Berglund out to make good on his new deal and prove he belonged in the Blues' top six. However, the 25-year-old struggles to match his previous career highs continued, as he notched 14 goals and 18 assists for 32 points in 78 games. Though he had somewhat underperformed, these numbers helped the Blues to book their ticket to the playoffs for the third straight season but Berglund went scoreless in four playoff games as St. Louis were eliminated in the first round by the Chicago Blackhawks. After his one-year deal had expired, and having seemingly levelled out as a regular 30-40 to 40 point scorer in the league, the Blues felt that Berglund had done enough to extend his time with the team and warrant a longer deal with the franchise. So, on June 26th, 2014, they signed Berglund to a three-year, $11.1 million contract extension worth an average annual value of $3.7 million a season. Thanks to his consistent, albeit limited, production over the past few years, Berglund would be getting his wish to continue playing for the only NHL team he had ever known. The 14-15 season saw the newly contracted Berglund continue to put up similar numbers to his past few seasons, as he notched 12 goals and 15 assists for 27 points in 77 games. These stats helped St. Louis make their fourth straight appearance in the playoffs, where Berglund scored a more impressive four points in six playoff games, but the Blues were eliminated in the first round by the Minnesota Wild. The 15-16 season saw Berglund's numbers remain consistent to previous years once again, as the former first-round pick potted 10 goals and 5 assists for 15 points in a season limited to just 42 games for Berglund due to injuries. Despite going down for a large chunk of the year, Berglund was back for the Blues' postseason run, where he scored 9 points in 20 playoff games, but St. Louis were eliminated in the conference finals by the San Jose Sharks. 
The 1617 season saw Berglund have his best statistical year in half a decade, as the Swedish forward scored 23 goals and 11 assists for 34 points in 82 games, setting his career high for goals and marking the third and final time he would reach the 20-goal plateau in his NHL career. This improved production helped St. Louis clinch their sixth straight postseason appearance, where Berglund notched four points in 11 playoff games, but the Blues were eliminated in the second round by the Nashville Predators. After his three-year contract extension had expired, the Blues clearly knew the type of production and veteran presence they were getting from a guy like Berglund, and were keen to re-sign the Swedish forward to a more long-term deal. So, on February 24th, 2017, they signed him to a five-year, $19.2 million contract extension worth an average annual value of $3.85 million a season. Thanks to his best season in years, the 29-year-old was now locked up for the next half a decade. However, though he had just signed the longest contract of his career, Berglund would no longer be in St. Louis, or even the NHL by its conclusion. The 17-18 season saw the freshly contracted Berglund take a slight dip in his production compared to last season, and be more consistent with years past, as the former first round pick scored 17 goals and 9 assists for 26 points in 57 games. This return to his normal form was a contributing factor in St. Louis's playoff streak being broken, as the Blues missed out on the postseason for the first time since 2011. Though the Blues had had a disappointing year, Berglund was back to being the player he always had been. However, thanks to a unique set of circumstances, the Swedish forward was about to leave St. Louis for good. On July 1st, 2018, it was announced that Berglund had been traded to the Buffalo Sabres, along with Tage Thompson, Vladimir Sobotka, a 2019 first round pick and a 2021 second round pick in exchange for Ryan O'Reilly. Despite Berglund's contract having a 20 team no trade list and with Buffalo reportedly being on said no trade list, this deal should have never taken place. However, Berglund's agent didn't get his no-trade list to St. Louis GM Doug Armstrong in time, thus voiding the clause in Berglund's contract and making the deal possible. Wow, so Berglund's agent and his inability to do his job cost Berglund his spot on the Blues roster. I bet he changed agents pretty quickly after that, folks. After a decade in a Blues uniform, Berglund was leaving the only NHL team he had ever known, and was heading east for the first time to suit up for the New York-based franchise. However, this move would soon lead to Berglund's departure from the best league in the world. The 18-19 season saw Berglund suit up for the Sabres for the first time and have a pretty slow start as he scored just two goals and two assists for four points in the first 23 games of the year. However, things took a sharp turn on December 15th, 2019, when Berglund was suspended indefinitely by the Sabres for failing to report to the team. At the time of the suspension, Berglund had missed the past two games with what was claimed to be an illness, but then never returned to the team. Things took a turn for the worse just four days later, when it was announced on December 19th that the Sabres had terminated Berglund's contract with the team, thus making him an unrestricted free agent. Rather than look to sign with another NHL team or finish out the season in Europe, Berglund made the surprise move to step away from the league and even the sport of hockey as a whole for the rest of the 1819 season. In several interviews following the events, it was reported that Berglund was still upset with his agent for failing to get his no-trade list in time, as he wanted to stay in St. Louis. Also, Berglund said that he was really struggling with his mental health during his time in Buffalo, 
to the point where he was no longer happy playing hockey. With roughly $10 million still left on the table, Berglund walked away from the sport he had played professionally his entire adulthood, in order to get himself back to a happier place mentally and rediscover his love of the game. Say what you want about the guy, but a decision like that takes balls, and learning this has given me a newfound respect for Patrick Berglund. After all, you can have all the money in the world, but if you aren't happy physically and mentally, then it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Anyway, after taking the rest of the year to focus on his own well-being, Berglund was interested in getting back onto the ice and playing hockey again once free agency began. Instead of attempting to return to the NHL, in June of 2019, Berglund signed a one-year contract with Jörgardan IF of the Swedish Hockey League. To this day, Patrick Berglund is a member of Jörgardan's roster. At the time of this recording, the former first-round pick has scored 16 points in 24 games, so as being a pretty productive player for his new Swedish side. At just 31 years old, and with minimal injuries during his career, Berglund still has plenty of gas left in the tank physically, so there is nothing stopping him from making another appearance in the NHL if he feels he wants to return to North America. However, there is nothing wrong with Berglund remaining in Sweden or moving to another European league for next season and beyond if that is where he would feel happiest. I mean, he did spend a decade in the best league in the world, so it's not as if he has anything left to prove to anyone. But regardless of where he decides to take his talents following this season, there is no doubt that Patrick Berglund had a pretty good run in the NHL. In 717 regular season games, Berglund scored 170 goals and 156 assists for 326 points, as well as 26 points in 60 playoff games. Add to that three 20 goal seasons and a place on the 2009 All Rookie Team, and this former first round pick clearly could have done a lot worse for himself. And there you go. That's what happened to Patrick Berglund. What do you guys think about Berglund's career? Was it good? Bad? Or do you think we shall see him in the league again before he's done playing? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Chris Gadsby. Connor B, Martin Tolness, Max Artis, Nat Marlowe, and Paul Malia, as well as a huge thank you to The Legacy for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.